Welcome to Art on the Brain. I'm Kelly Drake and today I'm going to show you how to create a simple and beautiful mixed media piece with watercolor paint, pencils, and ink. Okay, so first of all, I'm looking for something that is easy to define in simple shapes, but will still be interesting to look at and recognizable. So in this demonstration, I chose one of my shells that I found in Florida, which I'm very proud of. Um, I also add a, a, another little line there just to improve the composition. Now I'm gonna tear off little pieces of the masking tape, and I use blue masking tape so it doesn't stick too much. I don't wanna tear the paper when I pull it off. And these little tiny pieces of masking tape that I'm tearing are creating a lot of character and building an interesting line around the shape. Now, wherever I paint later, where the masking tape is, is going to stay white. So this is one way of leaving white when you paint with watercolor. Because unlike other paints, you can't add the white later. So here's the final outline. And I decided to add some little shapes in uh, some of the background here to just to create some interest. And I thought they might be fun to play with later with uh, colored pencils or ink or something. So just putting in those little shapes. And you can take your time doing this and just figure out what looks best. And if you don't like your shapes or if you did something you don't like, you can always take them off. And I'm just pressing them down to make sure that the water doesn't go underneath them. I like to limit my colors, so I chose four colors here to try that go together well. And I'm going to stick to those colors so I don't get too off, uh, off course here. I'm starting with the green and just painting in this little, I kind of think of it as a shoreline there. And one of the tricks we use with watercolor sometimes is some just some plain old plastic wrap. You wrinkle it up and press it down and then let it dry. Once it's completely dry, you can peel it off and see the really interesting texture that it leaves. I'm just checking to make sure it's dry before I go on. Okay, so now I'm going to choose one of my other four colors, and this is a beautiful cerulean blue, and it goes well with that green, so I'm going to wet the paper just so that I can um, put the color in and have it bleed around, make it a really beautiful wash. So now I'll load up my brush. Well, first of all, I'm gonna look and see that I got everything wet. You can look at the shine on the paper and see where it's wet and where it's not. You really wanna make sure you've got everything even. So now I'll load up my brush with that cerulean blue. And I'm just going to go in on the right side of that border line. Keep it over here on the right side around the shell. And I like to put in darks and lights when I put in a wash so that it's, you know, some people like really even washes and that's great. Um, I like to vary it a bit just to create a little more depth. So now I'm loading up my brush with more color to just put a few more deeper blues in and adding a little bit of that olive green just to tie everything together so it doesn't look like two separate pieces. And you can work on it until it starts to dry a little bit then you want to quit. You can always re-wet it later after the, that layer is completely dried. Now this is something I like to do once I've gotten a little too much water going in there and it's bleeding off to the sides to keep it from blooming too much is to just tilt the board and get some of that excess off with the paper towel. Okay now I've let it dry and I want to add a little depth kind of a shadow to that shell so I'm just using water to put around the bottom outline of the shell and then I'm going to load up a smaller brush with um, an indigo color, which was one of the colors I chose, an indigo or an ultramarine. And I'm just putting it in pretty dark right next to the edge of the shell outline. 
and letting it bleed into that water that I just put in. I like to get it really dark next to the edge so that when it bleeds out, it does look like a, a drop shadow. So now I'm going to take some a little bit of extra clear water and just go outside where I put that water before so it bleeds out and doesn't just stop at a weird um, hard outline. Now it's time to paint the shell. I'm putting some water in so that I can put a wash inside the shell. Decided to use some more of that cerulean blue and I love how it goes into the water and just bleeds. You can watch it bleed really fast and uh, it just the pigment separates and I like that feel. It, it has a really beautiful texture to it. So now I got a little too much blue in there in the end. I lost some of my white so I dabbed it just a tiny bit with a paper towel. That's okay to do if you don't use that um, in excess. So now just getting the rest of the shell wet and this isn't going to bleed into my other area which is already wet because the tape is stopping it. And normally if you didn't have the tape there you'd want to let that other part dry completely before you started putting any other color next to it unless you wanted them to bleed together. So now I'm kind of using my shadow technique again and looking at my shell, my subject, there's a darker area in there next to that edge. And because I put tape in there uh, inside that fold of the shell, it's created a real graphic effect with this with this illustration. Um, the shell doesn't really have a hard line here, but I just thought it looked good with the design, so that's okay. Added a little more cerulean in there to tie it all together. And now I'm just getting a little bit of that line in there that you see in the shell. And still putting that wet in wet so it's not a hard line. Now it's dried and I'm going to remove the tape. And though I've sped this up so you don't have to watch everything, um, it's important to really be careful, take your time to take that tape off. So if it starts to tear the paper at all, you don't have a bad tear. Um, now I'm using watercolor ink and acrylic ink or India ink also works. And I just like to use the dropper to create an interesting line. Um, it also creates very thick ink and so it takes a long time to dry. So if you're going to do this, make sure you have plenty of time to let this, this uh, painting dry. Um, as you can see, there's lots of interesting thicks and thins and when it dries it even has a texture on the paper and a little bit of shine so it has a really interesting look to it when it's done okay so now i've given this that ink i've given a full day to dry and then now i'm going in with some of my watercolor pencils and kind of tidying up some of these edges and giving them a little emphasis by adding color. And it's fun to emphasize these shapes that I put in with the tape because these are shapes that I might not have drawn myself. They're um, very distinct. Each one is different. And including this line that I put, this shoreline that I put in is, is very different with the tape than it would have been if I had drawn it. Just tidying up the edge of the shell with the pencil. And I'm going to go in later with a little water and soften that so it looks a little more, it looks kind of like a hybrid between the pencil and the paint. I love watercolor pencils because they add a lot of texture and the colors are amazing when they dry. They're, they're really true to themselves when they dry. And like sometimes watercolor can dry a lot lighter than what you had painted and that can get um, a little bit troublesome sometimes. So it's nice to add a little bit of that watercolor pencil and then soften it with some water. So it still looks like it belongs there, like it's part of your watercolor painting. But it's created some drama and some texture. 
So just wetting those edges a little bit, trying not to get too carried away, but just softening them. And now I'm looking at these shapes and thinking, maybe they're overpowering my shell a little bit. And so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna put a little water in each of those shapes and a little bit of that indigo or ultramarine color into the water just to push those shapes back a little bit within the composition so that they um, are somewhere between the foreground and the background. So I consider the background the wash and the middle ground these shapes and the foreground is the shell. So it just kind of puts those back a little bit so the shell hopefully pops even a little bit more even though it already does pop quite a bit because of those uh, super dark ink lines. Okay, so now we're finishing up. We're about done with this project. Well, thank you for spending some time with me today, and I hope you do try this at home. Also, please take a little time to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more like this. And if you want to know more about me, my artwork, and my children's books, please check out my website and my Facebook page. Thank you.